most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in return with having. When a man is looking for his clothing, he's expecting to find that his clothes have not been urinated on by someone else. You see, most human beings know what their own incontinence smells like. Much like most human beings know what their body is supposed to look and feel like. People in a police force that destroy American rights do so by the violence in their souls, the vanity in their minds, and the manipulations they play at all the time. The favorite attitude is someone called, but you have to call the city office to find out who called, and that's a lie that they place. Most Americans have become incredibly intolerant of police officers is fairly true. They forget that they represent the city offices and the mayor's offices much like other people do. What they also forget is at the end of the day, based on their shift and their responsibility to a judicial system, is that they actually represent at the very, very last moment of their day the president. So if a president has a policy, it's pretty fucking important that police officers follow it. But here's the problem. A lot of hate crimes will go undocumented and unreported. And the reason that they go undocumented and unreported is because police officers systematically use their verbal, social, and social media networks to share illegally gotten information, immorally received information, and often stolen information that doesn't belong to them, particularly in the area of privacy rights and medical rights. You see, we have an illness in America that people will often go into a hospital to try to take something or steal something. That is a black attack. That is a Hispanic attitude. That is something of white trash's concept of God, I guess. But the truth is, when I say these terms, it doesn't ingratiate you to me. It makes you mad at me, and I don't give a shit. Because if your life is participating in a hate crime, if you're driving up to someone and asking them, do you want it or not, it's a rudeness. I never saw Christ walk up to anyone and say, do you want me or not? What he did was lovingly rebuke people. What he did was say things that were appropriate, but he was Christ and you are not. Just because you're Christian doesn't mean you're not Wiccan, and just because you're Wiccan doesn't mean you're not Christian, but you may not claim that religion. And we don't claim the religion of Christianity anymore because when we do, people just go, oh God, get me out of here. Because people don't have a positive view of Christians anymore. We love our Christian authors. We love our Wiccan authors. We love anything that relates to God if we are a person who chooses the First Amendment in terms of freedom of religion. And that we have a choice and we have a right to pursue God any way we choose. We have the right to purchase any book we want, and yet police officers in a prison will steal away a man who's reading about Wiccanism so that he can have a different understanding of the Lord's house. And they will steal his birth certificates, they will steal his documents, they will steal his clothing, they will steal all his beautiful Catholic purchased cards. And they will do this, and they will take his rings, they will take his metaphysical things, they will take his one-of-a-kind items from his travels abroad, and they will do this in the name of what Lord, I don't know, just to do it, just to be offensive, just to be in charge of things. And there'll be a matronly bitch dyke woman whose name is Sam, and she'll have his glasses on, his second pair of glasses that God said, buy those. And the reason he said buy those was so it could be provable that she did that in front of him. You see, in life, these people who are not high enough to be in the military, not in shape enough to be in any kind of marine ship, but want to carry a gun or want to be in power over people or just want to do something to get their heart on, they don't have anything going for themselves outside of their little sheriffdom. So what they like to play at and what they like to do is they like to tase people as one little black girl came running through to say to another sheriff, I got to tase somebody today. And you're sitting there listening as an educated professional person stuffed in a cell from a lying bitch courtesan that literally we're tired of this. If what was going on there had been videotaped or caught by a real live reporter going through there, it wouldn't be caught because they'd be on their best behaviors when the major walks through, right? 
They don't even stand to greet him. They don't even stand to salute him. They don't do one fucking thing to show their own reference to leadership. And openly their mouths are as worse than their bites, if you will. But isn't it fascinating that everyone in the prison got information to someone's medical information, which wasn't their lawful right to know about? There would be absolutely nothing in that situation that was required. The first time it happened, they didn't do things wrong. They did things exactly right because a black woman was in charge. She recognized the law. She recognized their boundaries. She recognized what it was there for, and she said no to it all. But the second time the man was there, he got fucked over by the sheriff, by 200 people, and by the nursing staff that was literally put in there because they can't apparently employ one correctly in that situation. And isn't it interesting that the whole system is related to a used-to-be governor called Pence who became vice president because, God help us, Trump caught him and, and tasked him and asked him. But as I travel through my story, are you still paying attention that people in a community will participate in what they feel is God's glory, but it's actually an abomination to God? Because any time you put your hands in someone's pockets, any time you put your hands on somebody's body, you better have fucking lawful consent. Because this is America, not some fucking third world country where we human traffic people at our descent. And if you participated in accosting someone with your belief of, I'm just going to drive up and force my money on him, you've failed yourself before the Lord. Because every human being has the right to say yes or no to something. And when you try to practice financial abuse of, I'm going to give this to him, and then I'm going to take me something, that's a form of financial abuse. If you're a true person of the Lord's house, it's really straightforward what you should do to not look like a mouse or a louse. You drive up if the Lord has inclined to you that you should help someone, and you do one of three things. You simply say, hey, it looks like you might be in struggle today. Please have a meal on me. And you walk away after giving them some cash or a gift card you see. If you're too cheap to do that, if you're too sullen to do want to do that because you don't trust the person that you're trying to help, meaning you're worried they'll use your cash to buy something for their addiction or something for their predilection or something else that maybe they might need, then you can provide them a can of protein, provide them a can of iced tea or lemonade, but I'm talking about a motherfucking can. Because bottles can be tainted with, bottles can be played with, and the fucking Mexicans and Hondurans and the shitbags from other countries know this. And Americans are too naive about it. If your bottle doesn't click when it opens, how do you prove that to a store? Sometimes in a good place like the Target campus, you can walk back immediately and say, I'm sorry, but somebody opened this on your staff or in your cleaning crew. But in life, we have to decide what kind of people we're going to be before Jesus because any day, anyhow, any way, God will call your little bitch ass home. And when he does that, Lord Gabriel will stand there at the gate and say, okay, it's not about what Jesus did to get you here. It's about what you did to think that you belong here. So while we don't go to heaven by our works, we certainly get evaluated, assessed, and put in a place based on how we live our lives. And if you've been monkeying with someone's clothes so they become so tight they can't wear them, then you have destroyed your life with Satan's house. You'll be headed to Satan's house. And if you've destroyed a family during the late stages of a parent's life, then you destroyed yourself before God. It's like that marvelous scene in one of the Lord of the Rings where the king is seated there. He's all crusted over because a whispering worm that sits next to him spewing hatred. And it takes a real great wizard to walk in and break the curse. To get him to stop hearing the shit he hears. Where a father hates his son. Or a mother hates the one she's got. Because siblings or outside people are spewing a lot. You see, Satan works through the mouths of people. Satan works through gossip. Satan works through people who come in to steal hearts and walk away. As if it's a play at the end of the day. But the bitches of our retail community are participating in community policing. And that is illegal under every law of the United States with regard to stalking that leads to sexual assault, physical abuse, and molestations that are not your lawful right to induce. When police officers can't win for a day, they often whisper their way 
into other people's hearts, minds, and souls. And you're the stupid fuck who falls for it. It's how people in witness protection get killed. Because they've seen something, they've heard something, they know something, and then they get hit because the police officers who did it all are such dicks, they manipulate your matronly old-fashioned women to believe anything they say because they carry a badge and they've got their little flags with their blue lines or red lines on them today. That is actually an abuse of an American flag. I don't see other communities doing that. I see them making and painting their own flags, which is stupider than shit, because what a person does in the privacy of their home is not your fucking right one little bit. How a person chooses to choose their clothing is not your fucking right, you little motherfucking shitbag. So the next time you want to play with someone's clothes, go to get a doll like a child would. Go to the store, pretend you're 12, pick up a Barbie doll and do your fucking thing. But don't you ever touch another human being like that. Because all it proves is that you're in the house of the Lord. Not at all. You're in the house of Satan mauling someone's life, interfering with their wife. And let me tell you, Jesus Christ is not pleased. Because he picked her for him, not you, motherfucker.